What is going down my YouTube family? It is your boy Zeri, and I am here to talk about my Raid Shadow Legends 2021 wish list. And these are just things I'd like to see possibly brought into the game or changed or tweaked to continue the trend that Polarium is on with quality of life features, making the game better for all parties involved. And I think these things could be really beneficial. Then at the end of the video here, I got one more Void Shard. We're going to try to pop that and see if we can have some lightning strike but you know I, I was able to finish up the ascension mission for the force and then running the void tower 10 times on level 15 gave me that void shard and i'm pretty dang close 16 missions left here and can't wait for that to happen so let's jump into my 10 things on my wish list i'd really like to see happen to raid shadow legends The first thing up, and I know multiple people have talked about this, is the Silver Crunch. The Silver Crunch is outrageous in this game, and I have a couple things on this wish list that I think could really help the Silver Crunch. And I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. I think it was Ash, maybe, talked about putting like a silver mine in here, much like that with the gem mine, where you know every day maybe you can get 100k silver, and yes, that's going to let you swap one gear piece a day, but at least it's free silver. And you can save your energy for what it's meant for, not silver farming. So the silver crunch needs to be addressed in 2021, and it needs to be managed in a way that benefits the player base as a whole. Now, when it comes to gear, gear exchanges need to change. And I was thinking, you know, like they're, they're you know, Hell Hades and Jade Gigs were talking about, they have this thing already in the code where they can turn it on free for one day. And you can do as many as you want for free for one day. Well, the point of a mobile game is to, to keep bring people back in and have them stay in the game for as long as possible. So what if they gave you five free gear changes a day? So essentially you could switch out one, you know, almost a whole set on somebody once a day. It would increase the, the amount of time people stay in the game and have fun with the game, theory crafting. Like if I wanted to bring in Masha Led, but I want to try to put him in a stun set, you could do that. You know, you, you could have, I would have the opportunity to be like, okay, I'm going to try him in a stun set, and I get it for free, and then tomorrow I could switch it back for free. It would increase the theory crafting, it would increase the engagement and the time people spend in this game. I think it's a win-win for both parties. It also helps alleviate that silver crunch a little bit, and it's not a whole hell of a lot. You get five, or you get six, so you could do one full gear set a day. I mean... I don't think it's a lot to ask, and I think it's pretty easy to accomplish, and, I, and I, it benefits both parties. Now, my next one has to do with upgrading gear. And when you upgrade gear, again, you know, it sinks silver, right? It, it sinks, it's a silver crunch, and, but there's times where I am upgrading something, and I literally blow through 2 million silver from 15 to 16. That's just outrageous. To me, that's just pointless and stupid they have a pity system now on legendary pulls why not have a pity system in the upgrading so put it at 10 or 15 all right if, if you've sat there and watched that bar say fail 10 times in a row the next one is guaranteed to, to hit so you know this most of the time it's put in here for there's like a balancing act between having it go into circulation they gotta they don't want people with too much silver so they find ways just like in any game with your gold, to minimize the amount of silver or gold you can have in these games or any sort of that currency. And yeah, but in here it's taken just, in my opinion, a little bit too far. So say I, I hit that 10 on a six piece. I mean, that's still 360K, sometimes 400K silver for one piece for one level. But at least I know on the 11th try, I'm getting it. And it, it would, again, make the game more engaging. More people would be apt to continue to play or upgrade material to try new things out to keep people coming back. I really think a pity system on the, on the equipment upgrades would be, or artifact, whatever you want to call them, would be really, really beneficial. Again, cap it at 10 or 15. So at least we know, okay, if I fail 
10 or 15 times, and it's still an absurd amount of silver, but it still brings that balance that we have, and it brings the balance to the players to know, okay, well, I need it. At minimum, I need 400K sitting there to at least upgrade this. There's times in the artifact event where I, I don't even want to do it because I'm like, well, I got 3 million silver, and that could that could take one one piece. I mean, it you're torn between that and, and you should be in Hero Collectors, don't get me wrong, but it's just taken to the extreme. And this is one way, again, we can alleviate some of that silver crunch. So I really think that pity system would be super beneficial. Next one up is clans. Something needs to be done with clans besides the clan boss. I'd like to see a new clan boss. I, I started this game when it first launched and we were fighting the clan boss. And I know I'm not the only one who's saying this. But, you know, they, there was talk of a Hydra boss when I was watching videos and all sorts of things. But... What about like a um, clan versus clan option, right? Or even just a raid where you have three days to take this down. Copy and paste the Doom Tower, but make it for the raid. Make it for the clan, I mean. You know, like, all right, let's fight up 30 floors and people can take in what they got. And there needs to be a better reason besides clan boss. And it's a really good reason. You get a lot of good crap out of clan boss, don't get me wrong, but... There's got to be a better reason for us to join a clan than what we're in now. And, you know, clan versus clan, copy and paste it from any of the thousands of other hero collectors out there. Make that Doom Tower where you get a special currency when you log in that you can use to launch different hard levels. So it'd be kind of like a raid. Besides, leave the clan boss where it is. It's a daily to-do. That's great. But then have, like... A 50 level or 30 level doom tower where you can kind of go through and you chip away as a as a clan it would be super fun super beneficial and i again it's kind of copy and paste yeah they'd be like well we already have the doom tower yeah but it'd be fun to do stuff with your clans and more theory crafting and i i think that would be really really beneficial the one thing i i, I want them to keep is their solid rotation on the times two and the times ten event? And what I'd really like to see them continue is that trend of okay, well here's a times two event, but one champion is a times ten for those two days like they did. I think that was brilliantly done by them because I didn't have torment, right? And so I, I pulled everything I had in those first two days. But if I already had torment, I'm holding off for the next two days. You're already waiting two weeks for these things to come around anyway, so two more days isn't a big difference. But I, I really, really like that, how they, they had the times 2 and the 1 times 10. They don't need a whole list like they do for their normal times 10. But I think that would be really, really cool to do. And I think they need to continue their solid rotation and how they're keeping it right now. Because I remember when I first played the game, it was just like, oh, I think there's something coming in three months. That rotation they have now allows people to save and hoard or they know when to pull if that's been a huge improvement, so keep that going and keep that times 10 for one champion for the first two days. And then for anybody who doesn't want that times 10, they wait till Saturday and Sunday and pull. Love it. I think it's a, I think it's a genius idea, and I hope they continue that trend. 3v3 Arena is the next one I want to talk about. We need an overall in, overhaul in here so bad. The, the Bazaar is just frankly absolutely terrible, in my opinion. Why can't I save up for a legendary tome if I want one? It's going to take me forever. But I'm in bronze. If I want this avatar, why, why can't I save up for it, right? Or this, this sacred shard. Why do I have to be in a certain thing? And I know this has been talked about, but the other thing I'd like to see is some, some changes made to this to make it more fun. If it's 3v3, actually make it 3v3. Let's make three squads of three. That, that changes the way people think about stuff. I mean... People are in such a mindset of making the comps 4v4 so they can have one person do this and one person do this and one person do this. I would think it would raise some champions up the scale of what we're doing if it was 3v3. Like, when I played Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, they had the 3v3 Grand Arena, and that was so much fun. That was my favorite thing of all because it made you think of different comps. And something like that would be humongous. I... I think, or, you know, okay, this week, the 3v3 consists of only rares, or only legendaries, or, and you open the bazaar, so you don't have to worry about losing your spot, they open the bazaar, and you can just save up for whatever you want, 
But I really think the 3v3 could use an overhaul of make it the 3v3, like it's stated, right? Add some tweaks like they do with the tournaments of, okay, we can only use elves and dwarves this week. You know, I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. But I think it'd be so much more fun. Open that bazaar up and let me save for a year to get one sacred shard. I, I think that would be awesome. So 3v3 definitely needs some love and attention and some changes. Because we already have 3v3. It's called regular arena. And the other thing I want to see with 3v3 is... If I hit auto once, just let all my battles auto. Oh, it's so irritating. You put it on auto and you, you go get something to drink. And then you got to come back and push it again. I know it's small, cry me a river's area, I get it, but just even a small touch like that would make 3v3 less painful. It's, I, I don't look forward to 3v3, it irritates me. Yep. Now the next one is, I, I'd love to see some interface tweaks made to this game. Like, especially when you're running like a, a campaign, you go into your campaign and you have to switch out a guy. Well, you can, you can sort by level. Why can't I sort by stars? Why can't I sort by w whatever? But then you got to scroll all the way down here. Find the person you want. Make that more user-friendly. Let, let us sort by different things. Adding a spot here that says star rank. I'm not a programmer by any stretch of the imagination, but it really doesn't sound complicated. It's All the data is already in there. You just have to make a sort feature. So something like that would be really, really big. Some interface tweaks would be phenomenal. And, you know, when it comes to gear, when you're searching for gear, why can't I search for this is all I want? And why can't it be put in order? I want it from the highest speed. Why can't I select that? Some interface changes just to make this game a little more smooth and streamlined would be beneficial to the game as a whole. And my next one, number eight, is Great Hall. I think they should give you one redo on the Great Hall, even if it's an absurd amount of gems. They should give you one redo. Like, they give you a redo on the Masteries for free. Why not, you know, just a one-time general boom? Because so many people are in the game screw this up. And I'm one of them. And it's not because I screwed it up, because I, I'm making the adjustments to fix it. But they give you the opportunity if you screw up Masteries or you change what you want, where you want them to be, they give you that that chance to reset it, right? So why don't we get the chance to reset the Great Hall? I think that would keep people in the game. You know, because I know people get frustrated because they're like, oh, I'm going for attack. And then they find out that, that like, like I did, like I went all the way down on attack. I, w I wish that I was all the way down on accuracy. But that's besides the point. The point of the matter is if you screw up, you should be at least given one opportunity to make that change. We're given that opportunity in other places in the game. It should be brought to your Great Harl as well. You know, maybe of a lifetime limit of five. And that fifth reset of your Great Hall is like a million gems. So if you really want to do it that bad, spend five grand and reset your Great Hall. But there should at least be a one, like maybe 1k reset in gems for your Great Hall. It brings Flarium a little money because I'm sure people would spend money to get those gems to do it. And it gives the players a chance to, oh, I screwed up. I effed up. Let's move on. And I think that would be great. And my, my next one is, it's, it's a combo, 9 and 10, is we need to have an option where we can, one, save our artifact loadouts, maybe one per character. I know there's a lot of characters in here, but... One per character you can have, or maybe just a total of 20 for your account or something, but they need to have a way to save the artifacts. Because I don't, I don't want to screw around with some of the characters I use on a daily basis because I don't want to remember where I put those artifacts. That would be super, super beneficial. And then I'd love to see like a save team squad feature brought into the game. Because I have two Bellawares. So like, many people have two of X character. Well, which one is which? So, maybe I have one built for wave clearing in dungeons, and then I have one as my speed farmer. I should be able to save that squad in dungeons, right? 
and they kind of already have it in the game because if I click on my dragon's lair and I go to 20, I get to see that. But say I make a change and then I like three or four changes as I'm tweaking stuff and I can't remember exactly what I had, it should be a saved feature. Or like your fastest run automatically gets saved as your default. So if I exited out of here and went back in, my fastest run squad would be right there. And if I don't have those characters anymore, like as you're going through the game, it would just be an empty slot. But at least something like that would be super beneficial to this game as a whole. And I'd really like to see it come into the game. So there it is, my YouTube family. There is my wish list. And those are the things I really want to be included in this game to continue this kind of upward trend Polarium is on. They've impressed me with their way they're going, and I want to see that continue. And we have one Void Shard. I don't got Izzy with me here, but let's keep our fingers crossed and see what we get. Oh, hell yes. Boom, boom, boom. Big time. Big time pull for the account. Man eater. Hell yeah. So I'm going to leave it there. Yes. So glad I pushed hard to get that achievement done. So, hell yeah. And with that, I'm leaving it there. If you're just finding me for the first time, we do Raid Shadow Legends and Dragon Champions content on this channel. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on good stuff coming your way. I do appreciate all the support, the comments, the love I'm receiving from the Raid Shadow Legends community. And it is a slow grind, but I'm going to continue to grind it out. So I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. I just got a man-eater. <laughs>